Revelations 13, 16 through 17. And he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell except he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. I wanted to share this with those of you who may be new to the information presented so that you are aware whether you receive the RFID chip in your right hand or left or arm or leg, it doesn't matter where you receive it because once you take the mark, you forfeit your salvation. Revelations 14, 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receives his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of Elohim, which is poured out, undiluted, into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receives the mark of his name. This is making reference to hell to those who take the mark of the beast or worship his image. As of right now, they're promoting the RFID chip as a means of making life easier through movies and the media. But don't be fooled. In the UK, dog owners were forced to get their dogs chipped or get fined. Obamacare has stipulations that may cause those who have it to receive a chip. And at this point, it's rumored that they wish to have all Americans chipped in 2017. So I just wanted to make you all aware of these things. And I also have an older video titled Mark of the Beast if you want to see more. The Path of Righteousness. I wanted to present a video with something that I thought might build us up for righteousness. So what is righteousness? Righteousness is acting in accord with divine or moral law, free from guilt or sin. Repentance. We often hear about repentance or that we need to repent, but what's actually required when we repent? When we repent our sins in the name of Yahushua, two things should come to mind. One, we regret committing a particular sin, and two, we discontinue from committing that sin. Now this story pertains to the woman who committed adultery, who was about to be stoned until Yahushua intervened. Yohanan or John 8, 10, through 11. When Yahushua had lifted himself up and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those your accusers? Has no man condemned you? She said, No man, master. And Yahushua said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, I know that many of us struggle with sins, and some may even be addicted but we have to try our best to refrain from committing the same sins and walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. What this means is that we set our mind on the will of our father, Yahuwah, instead of the desires of our flesh. First Johannan or First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I know one of the sins that many of us can identify with is probably sexual sin or fornication. Ideally, if we are able, it would be best for us to be chaste. But for some of us, this can be extremely hard. But this is what scripture suggests. 1 Corinthians 7, 1-2 Now, concerning the things of which you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So, to avoid fornication, it is better that we become married, and despite what the media would like to portray as acceptable in marriage and sex, let's see what scripture says. Verse 3 through 5. Let the husband render unto the wife her due, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife has not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise also 
The husband has not power over his own body, but the wife. Deprive not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your lack of self-control. Sex is the very thing that connects two people in marriage, and in times past was the marriage to someone, that being the act of sex becoming one flesh. So don't deprive each other sexually unless you both consent, because to deprive each other is to make room for temptation by the adversary. Things such as cheating, which is, in this case, becomes adultery. And I don't state this as a means to cure all horniness, because although marriage is honored, we still need to choose a mate wisely and not just for sex. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto Elohim, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When we come into the truth, it's up to us to study the scriptures, and you can go about this in various ways and speeds. You can start by reading a paragraph a day, or a page, or a chapter. It all depends on how fast you would like to get through the Bible. You can also read three separate times a day, or read three different biblical books three times a day to cover more scripture, all of which I've done. And not only do we increase in understanding, but we also become closer with Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father. Shemut, or Exodus 28 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah, your Elohim. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your son nor your daughter, your manservant nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days you who have made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore you who have blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. This is a part of the commandments we are to be keeping, and more than just a commandment, it's also a mark, an acknowledgement of the covenant. Foods. Uyikra or Leviticus 11.9 these you shall eat of all that are in the water. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the sea and in the rivers, them shall you eat. So any fish that has fins and scales we are able to eat. But things such as shrimp, crab, oyster, squid are not to be eaten. Oyikra or Leviticus 11.3 Whatsoever parts the hoof and is cloven-footed and chew the cud among the animals, that shall you eat. So of these animals, they must chew the cud and have a split hoof. Animals such as ox, deer, goats, lamb, gazelle, cow, buffalo. Now this is a tricky one pertaining to birds. Deborim or Deuteronomy 14:20. But of all clean fowls you may eat. Now, although many have given their best effort to describe what makes a bird clean or unclean, I can only present what I've recently concluded. The key phrase to consider is after its kind. Every species or bird pertaining to its parent or bird family. So this is what I did. We know doves and pigeons were used in a sacrifice unto Yahuwah. And we also know that when the Yashraelites were in the wilderness, Yahuwah provided them with quail. So I looked up what families these birds belong to, and then any other birds of the same family, and this is what I came up with. Quail consists of Fascinata and Odontophorida, or to simplify it, big ground birds and small ones. Now, among other birds that fall into the Fascinata family are pheasants, partridges, jungle fowl, chicken, quail, and turkey. Doves and pigeons fall into the family Columbida, which also contains a bird called a pheasant pigeon. So I concluded these birds to be clean based on the family relation they have with quail, doves, and pigeons mentioned in the Bible. Other observations I noticed as pertaining to the quail family is that they all don't fly. Some fly short distances, 
but primarily roam the ground. None have webbed feet or large, sharp, curved talons as eagles and vultures do. Insects, Uyikra or Leviticus 11:21. Yet these may you eat of every wing insect that goes upon all fours which have legs above their feet to leap with upon the earth. Included are the locusts and the grasshoppers and the crickets. These are the clean animals and insects we are able to consume in keeping the Torah, but also keeping our bodies healthy and pure. Clothing, Uyikra or Leviticus 19:19. 19, 19. You shall keep my statues. You shall not let your cattle breed with another kind. You shall not sow your field with mixed seed. Neither shall a garment of mixed linen and wool come upon you. As plainly stated, we are not to mix cattle or two different kinds of seed in the field, or mix fabrics of linen and wool. And although we have no power over the manufacturers, we still may be able to wear a fabric of one kind to the best of our ability. Bimit bar or numbers 1538. Speak unto the children of Yasharal and bid them that they make them fringes on the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of tacolet. This color I rendered as cerulean purple, or purple with gradients of navy blue in it. The purpose of us wearing fringes on the borders of our garments was for us to look upon it and remind us of the commandments and to refrain from breaking them. As for the men, Uyikra or Leviticus 19.27 You shall not round the corners of your head, neither shall you mar the corners of thy beard. Some people render this verse differently, so let me give you some insight. During the days of old, there were customs of shaving your head for the dead or plucking out one's beard. Those who were idolaters had perfectly lined and trimmed beards, being that those attributes were accustomed to idolatry worship. Yashra-like men generally wore natural full beards. Having a beard was also associated with manhood and masculinity. But I'll leave you to decide what you would like to do. Women. First Kepha or First Peter 3, 3-7. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of braiding the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of Allahim, of great price. For after this manner in former times, the holy woman also who trusted in Allahim adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sharat obeyed Abraham, calling him master, whose daughters you are as long as you do well and are not afraid with any terror. Likewise, you husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Now let's take a look at some of the customs that the Yashraelite women of old used to wear. Yashiyahu or Isaiah 3, 19 through 23. The pendants and the bracelets and the veils, the headdresses and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the perfume boxes and the charms, the rings and nose rings, the festive robes and the mantles and the cloaks and the handbags, the mirrors and the fine linen and the turbans and the veils. Nose rings did not include septum rings. Deborim or Deuteronomy 22, 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto Yahuwah, your Allahim. So it would be ideal for a woman to wear a dress versus pants and for men, likewise, to wear clothing pertaining to men, and not cross-dressing or wearing a dress as some of the rappers and celebrities are trying to promote today. Lastly, immersion. Acts 2, 38. 
and Kepha or Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yehusha Mashiach, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I do think we should be immersed or baptized as Yehusha left us an example, as himself also being immersed by Yohanan or John the Baptist. Lastly, we must conduct ourselves in a righteous manner, not swearing, lying, stealing, fornicating, getting drunk or high, and that includes prescription drugs, and live in the spirit and not in the flesh. We should also love one another as brothers and sisters and build a closer relationship with Yahuwah. And although these things may not happen overnight, these are the things we work towards, repenting always, doing our best to keep Yahuwah's laws and commandments, having faith in both him and his son Yahusha on our path of righteousness. All praise and glory belongs to Yahuwah and to Yahusha HaMashiach and the Holy Spirit and to you and yours, Shabbat Shalom.